on a clock face that I've designed. And you can see here that I have all of my Perlex colors ready and uh, my white base paint that I'm going to start with right there. And um, I'm going to be using an Alumilite Clear A and B equal parts. So I used this mixing cup so I knew exactly what my parts would be to make them equal. And I stirred up the Alumilite for about four minutes. I'm, I've got about 12 ounces here. I'm trying to do two projects. I'm pouring the clock face and I'm also pouring upside down on a glass vase. So I'm just kind of experimenting to see if that will turn out. So I mix this Alumilite down so it's um, thoroughly mixed. I do introduce some bubbles in it, but I will clear that up later with a uh, torch. So I'm done mixing here. I did the uh, mixing off camera and I'm starting to pour the little jars that I have already put some bits of Perlex into. I have blue, I have a rusty, uh, like a bronze, I have a silver, and uh, I think I used a uh, yellow. And I also, my base color is white, which is what I'm pouring now. And that will um, be the titanium white. And I also mix a little Perlex white into the uh, mixture to give it some sheen. So here you can see that kind of shiny whitish mixture there. I, I just stir that up so it's all thoroughly mixed and that's the Perlex I told you I was going to put in. And I do that and now that I'm ready I'm going to pour it on the face of this clock. I don't show the detail of the um, pour over the vase but it didn't turn out anyway so you know live and learn. So I, I poured some of that white down and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start to mix all of those little two ounce cups. I think they're two ounce cups, something like that. But they're little Dixie cups. Uh, I'm going to mix those colors up in those. And once I'm done with those, I just throw those out. So now I'm starting to mix those cups up. And these are just going to be accents, not um, full color like the white. And there's a, an extended setup time with this. Not too long, but long enough for me to be able to leave that pour of white on the clock face. That's that beautiful, oh, it's gold that I use, not yellow. That's a real pretty color, real shimmer to it. I like that. So now I'm using, mixing up the blue. And I uh, guess I could have done better with my camera position, but, you know, it is what it is. They call it true blue, I think. But um, mixing up the blue. Here you can see how pretty that blue color is and the, the next one I'm doing is silver, I believe. Kind of shot it off screen a little bit too much, but yeah, this is a uh, silver. It's really beautiful. It has a very metallic look. I love the shimmer in these Perlex powders. And I know a lot of people use these and do resin paintings and castings and all kinds of things like that. And it's, it's great fun. They just call this particular stuff silver. And uh, the next one I'm going to be doing is this bronzy color. It's kind of a rustic-y, very earthy color of browns. That's it there. So once I get all of these mixed, again, there's quite a bit of time, and I've cut out a lot of the video to avoid redundancy. But after I get these mixed up to my satisfaction I'm going to pour them on this clock face and anything I have left over I'm going to pour in those extra pots in the back and see so now I'm just drizzling it on the clock face randomly and I'm going to get a uh, hair dryer out later and blow these uh, colors so they blend into one another and uh, makes them look pretty interesting almost ethereal. I leave a little left in the pot to see if I want to add some later um, sometimes it needs a touch more of richer color, greater pop, so I'll hold off some of the pour and then uh, add a little later.
here's what I did. It was a final piece and uh, I was pretty happy with it. I sprayed a little alcohol on it to get some cell action. You can see those spotty parts. That's uh, where the alcohol separates things and separates the colors and it just adds another level of dimension and interest to the uh, resin pour. And I think it looked pretty good. So I'm happy with it. And this is a shot of the pour of the uh, vase, the upside down vase, the experiment. You can see through, you can see the bracket I used to uh, hold it and suspend it in the air. But I didn't really like it. It just kind of lost its um, identifying colors. Like this really pops. But the vase just didn't do it for me. So I think that's going to be a scrapped idea. I won't be doing that. This pour, this resin is really meant for self-leveling, which means it should be something that is laying flat or, you know, facing up. Here's the next day. The resin is all dry. I had to drill a hole in it for the clock mechanism. And I also had to router out an area in the back for the clock to fit. Here are two of the extra resin pours that I had. I had leftover resin. So I embedded some uh, pine cone leaves into the resin pour. And I used primarily white, but you can see there's bronze and some gold and silver in these things. I just dripped that on the top. So I'll eventually cut these down to pen blanks or something and, and see how they turn. I think they might be interesting, but uh, we'll see. Well, this is the final clock. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Please subscribe or like my videos. And uh, if you do, you'll get uh, notifications as to when I post a new one. And uh, if you like it, let me know. I appreciate it. Thank you.